Once you found it, won't you declare, I have it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Lord. <laughs> That's a lot of y'all. Huh? Ecclesiastes 10, verse 19. Let's read it together, please. A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. Come on, let's read it again with uplifted voices. A feast is made for laughter. A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. You may be seated. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, give me something to fight with. Give me something to fight with. My dear friends, going down in pugilistic history, right behind Muhammad Ali's infamous rumble in the jungle, would have to be the bout between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. In all of Tyson's previous matchups, he was able to swing his way to victory handily until he encountered Evander Holyfield, who just refused to fall and kept going round for round. Realizing his arms weren't long enough and fatigue was starting to slip in, he rationalized to himself that if my fists won't work, I might as well use my teeth. What many haven't realized that with a lot of things you are fighting up against, Money can land a punch, but many times not a knockout. I was with my daughters on yesterday, and uh, they asked me, almost in a pre-planned conspiracy, Daddy, do you know what you're getting us for Christmas? I said, no, it's December 2nd, I have no idea. They said, we want to help you. We want to help you in what you're going to give us for Christmas. I said, make it easy for me. What do you want me to give us? And the three of them are almost in a chorus. Said, just give us money. We'll figure it out. We know you're busy preaching and traveling. You, you don't have time to do all of that. And daddy, you don't even have to wrap it. Just give it to us. Without any instruments, an anonymous poet once quipped, the real measure of your wealth is how much you are worth if you lose all your money. Did you hear what I just said? The real measure of your wealth is how much you are worth if you lose all your money. In plain speak, money can buy you a bed but not sleep. Money can buy you a clock but not time. Money can buy you a book but not knowledge. Money can buy you a position but not respect. Money can buy you medicine but not health. Money can buy you blood but not life. And money can buy you sex, but not love. How then do we reconcile these axioms with the utterance of the infallible word of God dictated to the wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon, who transcribed the revelation in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse number 19, clause C, but money answereth all things, which seems to be in direct contradiction with Psalm 49. Would you go to Psalm 49? I want to show you something there. In Psalm 49, David sings aloud, those who trust in their wealth 
and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can redeem their brother. For the redemption of their souls is costly. Wait a minute, Pastor. I, I thought money answers all things. But in Psalm 49, it says it cannot redeem my family. Because that cost is too high. What do I do about the family member that's in bondage if money answers all things? I know God can't lie. And I believe that the word of God is in fact infallible. So after investigating, I discovered that the word of God isn't wrong. Watch this. The translation is. The translation is wrong. The passage, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, was originally written in Hebrew. And in the Hebrew, the word, watch this, isn't money. The word, watch this, is price. With that in mind, it should read in its original Hebraic translation, not money answers all things, but watch this, but it should read, there is a price for all things. Did you hear what I just said? There's a price for all things. And the question you got to ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price for the thing you desire? There's a price to everything. The question is, are you prepared for the cost? In the book, The Jewish Phenomenon, the author unearths the fact that the Jews don't accumulate wealth to buy things, but in order to change things. I want you to write that down. God doesn't give you money to buy things. He gives you money to change things. They operate out of the mind frame. If you don't let us join your country club, we'll build our own. If you won't let us get serviced in your hospital, watch this, we'll erect our own. And the question that we've got to ask ourselves, Uncle Charles, is what then is the difference in the psychosis of Jewish people and black people because they suffered under the same segregation the same racism in the 40s the 50s and the 60s and made up in their mind watch this if they do not allow us to play golf on their country club watch this we'll build our own what did we do we made up in our minds altogether different differently watch this to protest so we protested to drink from their water fountain to eat from their lunch counter as to as opposed to finding watch this the infrastructure to build our own water fountain and to have our own lunch counter no longer as of this hour does God want you protesting to get access to what somebody else has I want God to give you the wherewithal that where they will not allow you that you'll have the wherewithal to do it for yourself yes the old axiom out of the Indian community is you give somebody a fish they'll eat for the day but if in fact you show them how to fish they'll eat every day I'm going to add a caveat in this hour I want God to show me how to buy the pond so I can go fishing whenever it is that I feel like it I want you to lift up that hand right where it is that you are. I want to speak something over your life. I want God to bless you to buy what other people didn't want you to have. God, y'all just missed that. I said, I want God to bless you to be able to purchase and build what other people wanted to block you from procuring. You put that hand down. If they took the car, 
And God, I need you to help me to buy the replacement. If you get fired from the job, God, help me to start a business from the ground up. God, ex add to me exactly what they took from me. And when that happens, God, I need you to arm me, not with bragging rights. I need you to equip me so that I can defend me. Do you know how your attitude, your posture, your position, and your faith would be different if you had money to fight with? God, I'm losing y'all this morning. I wish I was preaching a better sermon. What would you not tolerate if you didn't need that job? God, God I can't hear nobody. How would your position be different if in fact you did not have to go in humble, subservient, and broken, but you're able to look them in the eye as a peer knowing that I am here because I have a passion to do this, not an obligation to do this. And I need God to recircumnavigate your whole existence that what you do is not for the money but what you do is out of your passion out of your assignment and out of your call do you know how free you are going to be when you're able to operate at that job that you're not dragging yourself into voluntary disrespect because they hold it a check over your head but when you realize that God has given me everything that's needed and necessary in order for me to survive you can let them know at the door I don't need this God got something more in store for my life and I'm praying for you as your pastor and I hope you will receive it God in 2018 give me what I need in order to live with dignity in order for me to live with without compromise without sacrifice God equip me to live with my self-esteem intact that I don't leave out of a job feeling dirty and used and being taken advantage of God give me what is necessary to fight with Hallelujah. I believe it for you. I believe it for you. Hallelujah. I said I believe it for you. I'm only waiting on nine of y'all to get this. I believe it for you. You ain't talking to me crazy. God, I can't hear nobody. You ain't giving it to me when you feel like it. I work for this. I sacrifice for this. I did what was required in order to get this. Lord, give me the resources to fight with. For that community, watch this. For that community, money also means security. Embedded in their history through seasons of oppression, they use money to buy special protection to protect themselves from an onslaught of attacks. Watch this, brought on by anti-Semitism. I want the Lord to release money so that your children are protected from being placed, watch this, inappropriately into special education. God, I, can't, I better stop right here. That you're able, here it is, to get a second opinion. He, how are you going to be offended for me wanting the best for my child? Hallelujah, because I know what they are capable of doing. I know what their intellectual prowess, and you are not going to redirect the trajectory of their life because you are in bed with private prisons, and you don't expect a future for my son, for my nephew, and for my daughter. The devil is a lie. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all don't even realize autism is just 17 years old because of the vaccines they made you give your children y'all ain't saying nothing to me but God you gotta give me your money to fight back 
because there is no disease in the earth that God has not cured somebody from and I am sick of our people dying of curable diseases because we don't have the resources the education or the information in order to fight back but in 2018 God is in fact releasing for you everything you need for your optimum health everything you need for emotional wholeness everything you need so that your body is operating out of the primary will of our living Savior Jesus Christ you will not die in a clinic you will not die on the floor of a hospice you will not have to wait for some lazy nurse to come claim clean your bedpan but God said I am arming you to have the absolute best I speak it over not just your children but here's your shout your parents will have the best care that is available because you'll be armed to fight hallelujah 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 I know it sounds arrogant to say it out loud but it is not I need 500 of you to shout out loud my family deserves the best y'all y'all better say that thing I'm tired of you acting as if it is some noble attitude for you to act like you ought to take anything the devil is a lie you are a child of the king my family deserves the best hallelujah you need enough money to fight up against slum landlords god help me and predatory lending you need enough money to fight with so you don't feel obligated to keep going watch this into relationships because you need bills paid God I can't hear nobody in here you, you, you are pimping out comfortability because you scared of the cutbacks you gonna have to make if you leave it I don't want you in a mansion and miserable I, I would rather you start all over with a futon and an air mattress on the floor and have peace in your spirit saying God take my house and make it a sanctuary I don't want you I know this ain't traditional church folk I don't need you staying in it for the kids I don't need you staying in it the appearances for the family but the joy of the Lord is my strength you don't think God will make a way God said I had plans for you even while you were in your mother's womb that Negro ain't your provider but Jehovah Jireh he shall they amass all that money all that money they they amassed it the Jewish community did for many years but in the face and in spite of all of that wealth Watch this. Their money could not stop the Holocaust. Thus again proving money can't buy everything. Oh my God. Um, you can have money. Hallelujah. But if you don't have Holy Ghost power. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I, I didn't mean to go this far. Because I, I know y'all just wanted to shout over the Benjamins. But I want to tell you that some people in this room, they ain't got money, but they got an anointing. So that even when the attack of the enemy comes and rears his head, you can't even tell that they're going through. Because if God be for, who can be against? Hallelujah. 
hallelujah when when the enemy comes upon you like a flood hallelujah then the lord will lift up a standard the enemy is seeking whom he can devour hallelujah but i prayed for you that your faith will not fail hallelujah i need you to look at your neighbor and tell him when i ran out of money i didn't run out of an anointing i feel something on me right through here when the check started bouncing my faith started growing i got the wrong church right through here when stuff got tight for my family that's when my prayer started going up devil you better not play with me because when i get broke i get spiritual and i start trusting in god he will supply Be seated, please. I'm coming. It's early in the morning. God, help me right through here. I need you to grab your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, money can buy your cars. Money can buy your clothes. And money can buy your food. But I lived long enough to find out you don't need money to kill a demon and my house been under attack but with no money i begin to lay down the law and say as for me and my house we shall serve the lord hallelujah is there anybody here that know when the praises go up that's when the blessings come down look at your neighbor and say neighbor i don't know what this year has been but watch me praise him even when i didn't know where the money was coming from watch me lift him even when i didn't have anything in my bank account watch me give him glory even when my utilities were getting cut off i will bless the lord at all at all time and his praise shall continually be in my mouth i gotta tell you all this the enemy thought that when i didn't have money i wouldn't have a praise but he didn't understand that when the praises go up that's when the blessing will come down with no money i've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread with no money can nobody do me like jesus can nobody do me like the lord with no money he touched my body and he told me to run on with no money he picked me up and he turned he turned he turned he turned me around if you turned it i needed to turn where you are he's turning he's turning my budget around he's turning my finances around he's turning hey. i dare you to just turn one time he's turning he he's turning he's turning 2018 is gonna be the best financial year of your life you better turn around like you've been faithful over a few things he's turning Shout for your b- 
biggest bill. Shout for your biggest bill. He's turning. You may be seated. You may be seated. Oh my God. Oh my God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Woo. God, I feel him right through here. He's turning. Be seated, please. I, uh, I got to tell you two more things and then I'm getting ready to go. Since we're um, pulling up the veil about money, let's consider the difference on how black people and Jewish people approach wedding gifts. In our tradition, we buy toasters and blenders, flatware. But the Jews, they rationalize why buy luxuries for people who have no equity. Through our tainted lens, we see cash as an impersonal gift. However, for them, it's perceived as an intimate gift. Using the logic you have, watch this, in the Jewish community, hear this, in the Orthodox Jewish community, uh, when a Jewish couple gets married the first year, they don't work. Bride nor groom. That the first year of their marriage, watch this, their job is to get to know each other. As a consequence, the extended family, watch this, make sure that they raise the amount of their salary. God, y'all don't like this here. Uh, so that they can pull their resources together so that entire year they only work on each other and themselves. In the black community, the young couple, watch this, spends the whole first year paying off the reception. By the end of the second year, they separated. God, y'all. <laughs> Isn't it amazing, watch this, that in our community, 50% of all of our marriages end in divorce. In the Jewish community, only 7%. Because they understood the value of the investment. They make up in their minds that giving money is not impersonal. It is intimate because the young couple then can allocate the resources to where it is they best see it suited. Where do they need it? Maybe they need that cash, watch this, to pay off student loans, furniture, down payment on their first home. We don't even think like that. In our minds, you ought to be glad I came. I had to buy a whole nother dress. No, you didn't. It ain't your wedding. <laughs> and God dropped something in my spirit that I wanted uh, to give to you at 730 and no other time today. He said, Jamal, when you get to 730, please alert those who got up and drove through the rain. That they uh, forgot that they are married to my assignment. And because they are married to my assignment, I've got to give them money as a gift so that they can get through it for better or for worse. See, some of you all are not going to be able to catch this. Why? How, because you don't have any dreams, any aspirations, any goals, or any particular calling. But for those of you that know God has burdened me with something, and I'm not sure exactly how it is it's going to get done, God says, I'm getting ready to give money for your assignment. I, I knew y'all were going to miss it. See, because many of you only know about wealth in terms of what you can do for you. 
and so let me remix it for you God says I am getting ready to finance your entire idea that you, you, you are not going to have to look for other people to give you money for what I impregnated you with and I don't know where you are whether that's your business whether that's real estate whether it's a housing opportunity but how many of you got enough faith to believe God will bless me with enough resources to finance what I've been dreaming about see many of you can only give God glory over tangible stuff but can you give God glory over concepts can, can you give God glory watch this over stuff that is not material but knowing in 2018 all I gotta do is pursue it and if I pursue it God will unleash the finances for it last point and then uh, we'll go to communion in this society the average senior retires at 65 with $106,000 to their name. With $20,000 a year in Social Security benefits. That number, friends, is for Caucasian seniors. The average black person in this room does not have $25,000 cash and ends up living completely off social security and God gave something to me I don't even know who this is for but God says I am getting ready to release funds Jamal tell them for me please tell them for me I am getting ready to release funds for 50 of you in this room for one reason only so that you can and I need you to hear it all is only three things that I need you to know he says I am releasing funds so you can one retire early God I got the wrong church maybe I mixed these up and I should have preached this at 9.30 he said number two so that you can retire comfortably so that when you retire you will not have to adjust your lifestyle your living or your housing arrangement I can't hear nobody in here and thirdly so that you can retire healthily so you're retiring watch this not because of medical reasons but just because I'm sick of doing this and because I'm tired of doing this I just need a break and God said watch me give you the money to fight with that you're going to be able to watch this go on trips because you feel like it go on a 20 day cruise and you ain't told nobody you will leave it I can't hear nobody in here and just because you by yourself you got enough money to take one of your friends with you so that God will give you the companionship you need in this season of your life God told me to tell just the 50 of you I do not want you to just keep working until you can't work no more but God says I owe you something because of all of the years that you had to labor and sweat and and sacrifice I'm not gonna let you go out the way your mama and your daddy did but God said every generation it ought to get easier and easier and easier and here's how it's gonna get easier and only nine of y'all gonna be able to shout over this he said the only way I can make you comfortable is to get your kids out your pocket so I gotta fortify your children so that your children are I'm not living off of you so that you can finally live in peace <laughs> lift up that hand my time is up a feast is made for laughter wine makes life merry come on Sean let me go please but there's a cost to it. So pull all of that together. A feast is made for laughter, wine makes life merry. But there's a cost to you being happy. 
Can I give it to you? There's a cost to you being comfortable. And are you prepared for that? What makes other people happy don't even phase you. God, I can't hear nobody in here. Some, some people, in order for them to be happy, they need to be in a palatial estate. Other people, watch this, just for me to be happy, I need to be in a place, watch this, that's warm and comfortable for me. I, I don't even need all of that space. I need some real people. God says, I'm getting ready to prepare you to be in a place where you can eat what you feel like eating. And your health is of such that you ain't got to read the back of a bottle to see if this is okay. Because I've made sure that everything in your blood is clean and clear. I want you to lift up that hand. I speak it over your life. God, give me the money to fight with. So I can do what it is that I'm called to do. God, in order for that to happen, God, I need you to bless my children so that they're independent of my investments god y'all ain't saying nothing to me god i pray dear lord that whatever ideas i got in this season of my life god i ain't 28 no more but i still got dreams still got passion still got burdens god give me the wherewithal in order to get it done god i pray dear lord that you'll allow me to treat me without there being guilt affixed to it God, in this season of my life, help me to do some stuff for my family. Because I don't want to see my, my family struggling. I don't want to see my family ill at ease. God, I trust you for it. I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, this year, I proved to you that I would be faithful when I didn't have the money. So I came to church even when I was broke. I came to your house even when I didn't know how the bills were going to get paid. I gave an offering even when some days, God, I got to be honest, I fought with myself. But I trusted you anyway. Those of you, your faith is connected to the faith of your pastor. I need you right where you are. Come on, y'all. Not for no Louis bag, not for red bottom shoes. Watch this, not for you to get your hair done. But God, give me money to fight with. And those of you that believe that God can do it, I need you to take one moment. Would you open up your mouth and just give God a sound of your worship? I can't believe you're not going to give God better praise than that. You don't believe God is deserving of more than that? I said, give me something to fight with. I want every person standing, please. Every person is standing. Every person is standing. Y'all ain't gonna stand. The actual interpretation of that text, ladies and gentlemen, is not money answereth all things, but there's a price to all things. Are you prepared to pay the price for your happiness? There's a cost. For you living at the standard that you expect. Are you prepared for it? It is my glorious privilege to open up the doors of the church to offer Jesus Christ today. To be your loving Lord and wondrous Savior. What better season, what better time of the year than Christmas. For you to say, God, I offer myself as a present. I give, watch this, the gift of my talents back to the body of Christ. What must I render unto God for all these blessings? God made everything and everything belongs to him. I need you to help me, please. You're in this room. You've been coming so long we thought you were a member. <laughs> You're in this place and you know that God has pricked your heart at 730 in the morning. And you need to get in alignment because you know there's a price for your sanity. There's a price for your peace. There's a price to bring your family back together again. And the price, ladies and gentlemen, is your obedience. You're in this room. I want you to give me your hand, but more than anything, I want you to give God your heart. I need you to help me, please, sir. Please, ma'am. 
everybody who's in this room everybody who's in the room in just one minute I want you to go to work it's our last last month of the year and I want souls to be saved I want hearts to be fixed I want the body of Christ to be enlarged here's what I need for you to do please I want you to get out of your tent door we need some good people to fight with to fight to reclaim Park Heights to help us fight to reclaim a millennial generation to fight watch this the preconceived notion that the church doesn't care about what's happening in the community we need some people who we can fight with come on everybody in the room move from where you are go to somebody who you've never spoken to in church find out if they're saved for me please